This is a comprehensive dive into everything to consider when choosing an EDC flashlight. But since your life is the most important thing for you and your loved ones, we are going to start with how not to die because it's a tragedy that flashlights have exploded, literally killing the people using them, and I most certainly don't want that to happen to you. Regardless of brand, unequivocally the number one cause of death or injury from flashlights are rooted in batteries, with the most common culprit being multi-cell mishaps. So as an immediate rule, if a flashlight requires more than one battery, it's an automatic no for me. What's worse is when a flashlight is designed to take one battery, say, a pretty common 18650 lithium cell. And folks, whether it's to save little money or being too much in a rush to make a trip to the store, put two CR123 cells inside just because they fit, and that's terrifying. But to amplify safety, my other rule for rechargeable batteries is ensuring that they're made by a reputable manufacturer and bear some sort of labeling like this. Essentially, ensuring that there's a chip and internal integrated circuitry to prevent overcharging and over-discharging. Now that we've done everything that we can to prevent death, the decision-making tree gets significantly easier, beginning with output. I'm just gonna straight up say it. For most EDC requirements, a max output of just a mere 100 lumens is more than enough. If you have a job in, say, search and rescue, paramilitary, or as a first responder, you may need to carry a higher output torch, but for the vast majority of common EDC tasks, 15 to 100 lumens is more than sufficient, and we're going to demonstrate that right now. I'm here at a trail in the middle of the night and have adjusted my camera settings to be such that it's an accurate representation of what my eyes see, which is basically nothing. I've brought with me a budget EDC torch with a very modest output. This Fenix E12 has three settings of 5, 30, and 160 lumens, and as you can see in the middle of the night, just 5 lumens is enough to clearly see right in front of me. 30 lumens is more than enough to actively look for something you might drop in the dark, and its max output of 160 lumens is enough to illuminate more than 50 yards or 50 meters comfortably. Now, a possible consideration to require higher output for some people may lie in self-defense considerations if, say, you frequently come home later at night. If that sort of consideration rings true for you, that's when I would recommend a torch with 1,000 lumens or more for both its blinding and attention-grabbing effects. We started this video off with life and death battery safety considerations, and now we move on to battery preference considerations. Lithiums, which currently are the most common rechargeable option for torch batteries, are typically rated for 1,000 discharge and recharge cycles. Alkaline batteries have the benefit of being able to find replacement batteries anywhere, even in the middle of the night at a 24-hour gas station. But the downside to alkalines? They don't push nor hold a lot of power. For example, with that Fenix E12 I demonstrated in the dark trail earlier, its max output of 160 lumens lasts no more than one hour on a full AA battery, while this Olight Baton 3 Pro lasts up to 17 hours at roughly the same output with its rechargeable 18650 lithium battery. An interesting blend lies within the Rovivon E-Series Angel Eyes flashlights. They have got a non-user replaceable lithium battery on the left here, while the head unlatches and pivots revealing a slot for a AAA battery. And I know what you're probably saying to yourself, what the hell? This guy started this video talking about never using a torch with more than one cell, right? The key life and safety consideration is that I refuse to use an EDC torch that has more than one cell in a single circuit. This Rovivon's hybrid power delivery is comprised of two completely separate circuits, which means you have to deliberately swap between the power sources, so it's all good. To round out all things power, we'll hop over to the next category of consideration, which is charging. This one's a short one. I mean, we have USB recharging, external battery chargers, proprietary chargers, and disposable batteries. My general preference is the option to recharge with USB Type-C since I already own so much tech that uses this ubiquitous cable. External cell chargers are great because you can typically keep a few backups ready to go, while proprietary chargers like Olight's magnetic disk interface is the least appealing since you are forced to use only their cables. And yet, funny enough, despite this complaint, I use Olight torches the most day-to-day -day at the machine shop, and because I have accumulated quite a few over the years, I have a bunch of these cables, so it's not so much of an issue for me. Next up, we've got form factor, which beyond just size and shape includes mounting and button placement. I'm gonna gloss over physical dimensions because it's pretty obvious. 
If you want to minimize pocket bulk, opt for a keyring torch since, again, tiny lights like the Olight i1R2, the Nightcore Tiny 2, or even slightly larger options like the Rovivon E series are all viable options that provide enough output for most EDC use cases while maintaining a tiny footprint. But when it comes to form factor, mounting options can be an overlooked consideration. As someone who typically always wears a baseball cap, a clip that enables hands-free illumination by clipping to the brim of my cap is important to me. A magnetic butt is also useful for the same reason. Yet another potential option for hands-free illumination if there's an appropriate surface. With form factor out of the way, durability is of course a huge consideration too. There are generally two different types of durability ratings for torches, and they are impact resistance and water resistance. Impact resistance is typically rated on the packaging as a safe drop height, and a 1.5 meter or 5 foot safe drop height should cover most accidental drops since the most common drops are either from pocket height or handheld height. Water resistance is listed as an IPX rating. IPX4 means it's protected from light splashing, so basically a bit of rain is no problem. The climate you live in and your use cases will dictate your decision here. So we have chopped up all of the most important considerations for torches, and so I have lined up a bunch of flashlights that we've talked about from several different brands here, from least expensive to most expensive. And honestly, literally every single one of them will satisfy most people's common EDC needs in terms of output and durability. If you have made it this far, by the way, I promised a few weeks ago that I would be doing a giveaway for this newly released Olight Baton 3 Pro, and today's a day. This is a very short giveaway window, just 24 hours from when this video is published. So you will need to hit three entry requirements before 11 a.m. Eastern time on Monday, October 10th, 2022. The three entry requirements are one, because this is a subscriber giveaway, you of course must be a subscriber to this channel. So if you already are a subscriber, you are already a third of the way there. Two, you'll have to comment which flashlight you currently EDC or which flashlight you have been having your eye on as the next one on your wish list. And finally, you need to have an Instagram account. You don't have to follow me if you don't want to. You just have to have an Instagram account so that we will be able to arrange privately for shipping if you are the winner. You hit all three of these entry requirements by 11 a.m. Eastern time on Monday, October 10th, 2022, and you will be entered. I'll be announcing the winner within a week, and if you are curious as to how I randomly select and announce the winner for all of my giveaways, you can get all of that information in the video that I've linked down in the description below. Oh, I almost forgot. If you want to know the one flashlight that I'd keep from my current lineup if I could only choose a single torch I currently own, along with a few other EDC items I absolutely cannot live without, you'll definitely want to watch this video right over here. I'll leave it on screen so you have a few seconds to tap or click it, but while you're getting ready to do that, don't forget to hit that like button. And also, I do giveaways quite often on this channel, so definitely be sure to subscribe and hit that bell so you'll be notified the moment new videos and giveaways just like this one drop.